In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I got power from here all the way to over there. If you need power to a chicken coop, a shed, or even just in the middle of your yard next to a cute little pond, then this video will give you an idea on how to achieve that. Since it's just in the middle of a yard, I built and planted a cute post to house not only the needed outlet, but also a light. Let me show you how I did it. First, let me show you the area and the overall plan. There is power right inside the garage here, and I'll mount an outlet here, then trench and run a wire underground along the sidewalk. Tunnel under it to the other side, that was fun. Trench the remaining way to where I need an outlet, then put a post in the ground at that location. Of course, every dig site will have its own obstacles, but at least let me show you how I got through mine in case it helps on yours. The first thing I did was mount an outdoor electrical box to the outside of the garage. This entails punching a hole through the house siding so the wiring can pass through and be terminated to the GFCI plug. Once I was done, I started trenching. If you have a big job, then consider renting a piece of equipment for the day. This wasn't that big of a job, so I grabbed a combination of tools and got after it. What I found particularly useful was this smallest shovel. I'm actually not sure what it's called or its intended purpose, but I don't need a very wide trench, so its narrow profile was perfect. I plan on doing a direct bury, meaning I'm gonna be placing bare cable in the trench instead of running it through conduit. According to code, if the circuit is protected by a GFCI, then a trench can be 12 inches deep. Be sure to check your codes before tackling this job. To get the remaining depth needed after my little shovel pass, I came through with Maddox. This is the most time consuming part of the job, so grab some cold water and maybe a friend or two. After getting the trench all the way done, I next focused on tunneling under the sidewalk. So the trick for going underneath the sidewalk is to pretty much make a tunnel. I'm gonna do that with a uh, four foot piece of metal conduit. On this end, I have a cap taped into place so that to prevent dirt from getting into the tube. And on this end, I just have something protecting the threads. Torpedo level to keep it nice and level, and then a sledgehammer to see if we can persuade it through. The trick is to use a pipe to create a tunnel. Tell me that isn't a neat trick. After showing this on Instagram, people suggested hooking up a hose to it in order to remove dirt with the water. It sounds messier to me, but keep it in your bag of tricks as an option if hitting it is not working for you. With that knocked out, the last bit of manual labor was to dig a post hole because in my case, I don't have a building to place the needed outlet. So instead, I'll be inserting a post. And just a tip for you when digging, keep a sawzall on standby to cut roots out of the way. Okay, now let's run some wire. Back at the starting point, I first ran a piece of conduit down from the box to the trench, then wired in a GFCI. According to code, the circuit has to be GFCI protected if it's buried at 12 inches. And if you're ever wiring one in, be aware they aren't like normal outlets where the wire's origin doesn't matter. On the back of these, you're gonna have a line and a load placement. Line is the power coming in directly from like wherever the power source is, which is the breaker. The UF wire that is gonna be going out to the lamp post is gonna go under load. Just make sure you pay attention to that or your GFCI won't work. It is worth mentioning that direct berry wire is different than Romex that you run through conduit. The stuff is labeled UFB. And something about it is instead of stripping it like normal Romex, you have to pull it apart. Grab the two wires inside with two sets of pliers, then pull the wiring away, which will tear it out of the casing. By the way, I recommend these two-in-one pliers made by Crescent. It's a set of pliers and wire strippers in one. So I was able to start with the pliers, then flip them to strippers easily, and then strip back each end of the wire. So the power coming in goes to the line side. The power now going out is wired to the load side. Once that's buttoned up, I can actually start running the wire. Since I'm doing direct bury, this means I can go out from the outlet, down the conduit directly into the trench, through the secret tunnel under the sidewalk, then to the finish line. It's not that big of a job, but it's still a lot of work to get this far. Now the trench can be filled back in, then I can get started on making the cute lamppost I talked about. You can make this as tall as your needs or tastes prefer, but my friends wanted something low to the ground to accent upon they have planned. So this post is only 22 inches tall, which allowed me to get all four pieces needed from a single board. Next, I used a few pocket holes and screws to make up a box that's hollow on the inside. After punching a hole, or two holes actually, I placed some electrical boxes to the post. The lower one on mine will be the outlet, while the uppermost one will be the lamp. 
Before putting the second box, I fed a length of wire through, just enough to leave some room to work on both. On the lamp side, I stripped back the wires of my UFB, then wired in the lamp, connecting black to black, white to white, and green to green. The light fixture also comes with a mounting bracket for attaching it. Okay, cute little lamp. Simple, but cute. On the outlet side, I already placed a GFCI on the circuit by placing one at the starting point at the garage. With that, this outlet is standard with an outdoor cover. This will keep rain out, but has a flip top on a hinge for access. Now I got an outlet and a lamp on a post. Let's put it in the ground. Okay, that's the sleeve of the post done. Now let me show you the actual post that will go in the ground. Okay, so this is gonna be the post that needs to go into the ground, but then I also need a post. Let me grab this that will fit into this sleeve of a post. So what we have is a treated four by four that is still left as a four by four on the base and then cut down to the size that will fit inside of the post sleeve up at the top. But then you still need a place to run Romex to get up to the outlet. So inside of this is a channel cut. It doesn't have to be pretty so that I can run the Romex, glue this or screw it back together and then we'll start putting this in the ground. Now you could just make the sleeve taller to go directly into the ground. However, I personally like the idea of a pressure treated post going in the ground, being able to lift for decades, and then the sleeve being able to easily be replaced should it get beaten down by the sun. Pressure treated wood can hold up against rot for longer than non-PT wood, but to give it even more protection in life, I'm adding a post saver sleeve to it. This is a heat shrinkable sleeve that is lined with tar so that as you shrink it around the post, it creates a water and airtight seal. Tell me that isn't awesome. I'm now adding one of these to every post I put into the ground. It only adds a few minutes to installation, but will give the post years of additional life. After applying the heat, I cool it off with water and then I'm ready to set it into the ground. I use my hollow core, which is just a groove cut in at the table saw, to run up the wiring. Next I set in the post in its position and then start mixing and expanding foam to pour in around it. This is my first time using this product and I was amazed. Typically, I just mix up a bag of concrete and then let it sit for a few hours. This stuff is cheap and found at a local big box store. It comes with two components in it that, when mixed together, chemically react to make expanding foam. That will dry as hard as a rock. After following the mixing instructions, I pour it in around the post and then watch it quickly expand and rise up. The great part about this product is it only needs about 10 minutes to sit up. So it kills so much of the wait time. After it gets puffy, I use the saw to cut it back down to ground level. Now, let's throw in that cute post I keep mentioning. Cute. So I got a little ahead of myself earlier. After I wired in the line from the lamp, I attached the cover to the outlet, not remembering the main power needing to be wired in as well. No big deal. I took the cover back off and did that now, and then replaced it. The finishing touch is adding a post cap, which is also made by Fence Armor. These are made from galvanized steel so they will never rust, are incredibly easy to install or remove, and will help protect the post even further while giving it more character. They are the only post gap that will universally fit any 4x4. And the best part is, you can either leave it as a plain cap or choose from a variety of finials to personalize a fence post, a lamp post, mailbox post, any post. It's worth mentioning that Fence Armor products are made in the US and Canada. Find a link in the description if you want to find out more about the products. Okay, and that is how I got power from an outlet way over there to way over there. My friends want the lamp post to accent a little pond they plan to install next. I think the post is adorable by itself, but once it's next to a pond, I think it will really come together even more. If you're wanting power somewhere detached from your house, and I hope this video gives you an idea on what's involved. It's straightforward, and even though there is some manual labor involved, this entire project only took a day to complete. So don't put it off if it's on your to-do list. I will see you on whatever I'm working on next, guys. Cute little lamp. Simple, but cute. And that cute post I keep mentioning. Cute. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to also check out my website because I sell lots of useful things, such as these fraction and decimal charts. They're not only cool shop decor, but they're also functional. If you're interested in getting yours, you can click right here.